knows the harder you fall the higher you found starting the evening with a beautiful quote by paul warren i be jepal the host and i harshvardhan the co-host of today's session welcome everyone to the last and day 6 of rocket rocketry fundamentals it's a pleasure to see such exceptional encouragement and participation from you all in today's session we will talk about the different aspects of materials and structures by rv nandita and anushka mohari here on i'd like to thank all the members of team sark dr rudy and all of you for being a part of part of the small journey and the wonderful time we had when encouraging engaging and interacting with you all as a small start this webinar will mark the will be the mark of a special memory that is to be la- remembered later for sure i hope that the six days might have helped our audience to get a basic idea and insight about rocket science and technology also we will be looking into something which is very crucial into the in the rocketry part so uh, we can which we cannot neglect that is the materials and structures also guys in a couple of minutes i'll be sharing something interesting with you all which will make this session more exciting for every audience here sitting here in the audience we have with us uh, for everyone here with us today we are having a certificate of training for them so people who are requested to join the group link which is shared in the comments below do not leave the youtube video when the link is shared you just need to join in with the whatsapp group and then come back we'll be sharing the certificate with you all thank you the group link will be open for 5 minutes from uh, now after the group link has been shared the link will be revoked uh, in 5 minutes you would not be eligible for the certification if you do not join the group also the certificate of participation will be provided to all the participants thank you vijay for clearing this part i think we should start with the basics of material and structures and learn about the different relevant properties anushka you can begin now our audience is waiting hello everyone good evening i am anushka mohare and i am here to present you all materials and structures so without any further delay let's get, begin with our presentation so about me i am anushka mohare i am structures and materials intern at team sark and a third year mechanical engineering student at thakur college of engineering and technology mumbai let's begin by having a glance at all the topics which we'll be discussing about today so friends before starting with the session i would like to start by knowing what is your understanding of structures kindly write down in the chat box below what do you think structures are what is the basic definition of structures please write down in the comment box anything like not necessarily aerospace structures any basic structure what do you think the definition of it might be Uh, yes dr rudy has rightly said components of the vehicle so arrangement of parts right tanmay sharma so yes so let's begin arrangement of parts elements to form a complete body is structures but however the structure aerospace structures differ from other structures due to their high demands for performance and lightweightness the structure of rockets consists of various mechanisms pyros avionics actuators etc the study of structures involves thorough knowledge of material limitations structural stability strength considerations let's have a look at the factors affecting structures so does any one of you know what are loads can you write down in the comment box below what are loads the loads are in, 
uh, the most important factor which affect the structure. Yes, Shravani, forces applied, that is the forces which act on structures, causing it to vibrate, deflect, giving rise to stress and strain are known as loads. Various loads which are uh, which get applied on a rocket structures are mechanical loads, that is the physical stress, the physical pressure or tension uh, exerted, or exerted on a rocket body, the aerodynamic loads which consist of lift and drag forces. The lift forces act perpendicular to the flow direction and helps to and helps push a rocket upwards, whereas the drag forces act parallel to the flow direction and slows a rocket down. Then comes the thermal loads, which is the amount of heat to be removed from a rocket structures. The control that is maintaining the equilibrium and executing manu maneuvers, separation, acoustics, etc. Then we come to materials. The materials should be selected in such a way that they should be capable of surviving extreme hot or cold temperatures. The stability analysis should also be performed. The stability is the ability of a rocket to keep flying through air pointing in the right direction without wobbling or tumbling. Then there is also dynamic response which affects structures. The dynamic response is how a rocket reacts over time to some changes done in some systems. So with that information, let's move ahead to structural classification. The structures are broadly classified into two types, primary structures and secondary structures. Primary structures are crucial for rockets overall weight stiffness and strength, whereas the secondary structures uh, secure the various systems to primary structures and they do not experience direct loads. The primary structures include uh, solid stage motors, liquid stage tanks, payload fairing, etc. Whereas the secondary structures experience uh, include uh, gas bottles, fuel tanks for control systems, etc. The design requirements for structures. So, simplicate and add lightness was the, was the motto of Mr. William Bushel Stout, who was a famous aircraft designer. This motto means that simplification of design loads leads to reduction of spacecraft weight, which in turn makes avoidance of complex design solutions more possible, hence allowing more simple design and weight reduction. So, what all do we require for uh, designing the structure. We need to estimate various loads. We need to determine the forces acting on rocket during maneuvers, turbulence, landing, ground operation, which is also known as load analysis. We need to select proper materials. We need to perform analysis, uh, aeroelastic analysis, pogo effect analysis, slosh analysis. Now, what are these three terms? Aeroelasticity is the interaction of aerodynamic, elastic, and inertial forces. Pogo effect is an effect which was discovered in 1968 during Apollo 6 mission. This, the incident which happened was that during the last 10 seconds of first stage burn, the rocket experienced longitudinal oscillations. Now, what exactly Pogo, Pogo effect or Pogo oscillations are is that it occurs when a surge in engine pressure increases back pressure against the fuel coming into the engine reducing engine pressure, causing more fuel to come in and increase, again increasing engine pressure. The flexing of fuel pipes can also induce fluctuations in fuel pressure. If the cycle happens to match a resonance frequency of the rocket, then dangerous oscillations can occur, which can, in extreme cases, tear our vehicle apart. So, in order to overcome the POCO effect, the engine tuning is done also, damping mechanisms are applied. Then comes the slosh analysis. The, the slosh analysis is a test to, uh, to determine the ability of the control system of liquid propellant rocket to withstand or overcome dynamic movement of liquid within its fuel tanks. To overcome slosh analysis, dividers are placed inside fuel tanks, which are like large plates to avoid the flow. Also, we need to adapt modular concepts, so we need to provide tolerance, proper assembly, inspection for the, doing the structural design. The 
acting loads on space launch vehicles. There are three acting loads, which are namely steady loads, dynamic loads, thermal loads. Steady loads include bending moment, shear forces, axial forces. What are these three forces? Now, imagine a horizontal beam of length L upon which a weight W is applied at its center. This weight is applied in such a way that the beam gets split into two parts. This splitting is known as shearing of the beam and the weight or the force applied is known as shearing force. But in, if in a certain case, instead of splitting, the, the beam gets bent in a certain way, then it is known as bending and the movements are called as bending movements. Actual force is generated by thrust from motor weight of rocket and drag. Moving to the dynamic loads, it consists of thrust, control forces, acoustics. What are acoustics? Acoustics are uh, high intensity noises generated by high velocity exhaust gases, which are reflected by the ground and launching facilities. Then comes thermal loads. As mentioned before, it consists of aerodynamic heating and heat generated during combustion processes. This here comes the load analysis part. What input do we require for performing the analysis? We require the vehicle configuration, mass properties, and the material and its properties. Now, the output which we will receive upon doing the analysis will be the shear force, bending moment, and axial force which will help us determine the structure, the rigidity of our structure. Structural design methodology, method, methodologies. Investigation of stability, strength, and rigidity of structures is done for, by the methodologies. It includes pre preliminary vehicle and mission inputs, structural requirements, loads and uncertainties, design, vehicle dynamics. Uh, now, what are vehicle dynamics? Vehicle dynamics is the study of vehicle motion. For uh, example, if uh, we can study the how the rocket movement changes if there are if there is some change done in the propulsion system output, then we also study about DT stability studies. That is, uh, as I mentioned before, the stability, then the final configuration and weights. Here comes the part about design load factors. Now. Uh, how many of you all know what factor of safety is? I, I hope all the engineering students might be knowing what factor of safety is. Please write down in the comment box below. Give a thumbs up if you know about factor of safety. Yes, right. G gaming ASMR knows, Lovja knows about factor of safety. That's good. So factor of safety is the actual load bearing capacity or a required margin of safety for a structure or component according to its design requirements. It is used to reduce the value of stress so that material can be stressed below the maximum, le maximum limit of stress. The factor of safety formula is given here. It is allowable load upon design load. It is a numerical quantity and hence it does not have any units. Moving to the types of vehicle structure, there are three types, motor cases or propellant tanks, interstage structures and interface joints. Motor cases or propellant tanks are used for different propulsive stages of the vehicle. Interstage structures uh, facilitate the interconnection between propulsive stages and also house many other vehicle subsy uh, subsystems corresponding to avionics, control systems, pyros, mechanisms, etc. Whereas interface joints connect different structures. Testing the structure rocket structure must be capable of resisting all applied loads without failure during its intended life. For this purpose, testing is done. There is dynamics characterization, which is the evaluation of free vibration characteristics, such as the vibration caused due to mode shapes, generalized mass frequencies. There is dynamic responsibility, response and stability studies, which uh, involves the analysis of pogo stability, the uh, control structure interaction, aeroelasticity studies, 
then comes the vibration and acoustic testing which involves generation of environmental test level specification for component level and sub assembly level we come to our last part which is the materials the materials used for rockets range from a special high density material for heat absorption to high strength lightweight materials to carry flight loads the materials range from aerospace grade aluminium titanium carbon fiber reinforced polymers uh, various alloys aluminium lithium alloys uh, etc carbon form cold form stainless steel was currently used by spacex during starship the advantage of cold form stainless steel is that uh, when combined with nickel it gives high strength like in, it increases the strength by 50% in cryogenic conditions it is also easier to work with and also reusable also along with that it is 60 times cheaper than carbon fibers your comes the heat shield types the heat shield types provide thermal insulation and radiative cooling by emitting heat outwards they are made up of silica and are coated by glass to increase their effectiveness now what are improvements which can be done in materials there are two uh, things which can which we can improve by using different materials which is the structural strength and extreme thermal environment for the structural strength uh, we can uh, the new materials which we can use are beryllium and composite materials using high strength filaments on for extreme thermal environment the best current um, high temperature materials are nickel and ferrous alloys but these may soon be replaced by molybdenum also if studies are conducted for tungsten it might be a better future prospect however like today there is very little metallurgical work being done on tungsten and there is there is very much scope for work to be done there so with this i bring my ppt to an end if you have any doubts you can leave them in the comment box below thank you anushka uh, and for the questions and queries that our audience has uh, has for our presenter we will be conducting a final q and a right now here i will be asking you guys once again that the whatsapp group link that we have shared and we want every one of you every one of the regular uh, viewers that are in our course so we wanted every one of them to join the whatsapp group link so i will just once again share it okay now we will like begin with the next session on materials and structures um you are muted actually okay the Q and A right now will be done after the second session because it continues with the materials and structure. And today's second session was to be conducted by our presenter Nandita, but due to last minute complications, that be that she had an examination scheduled from 5 p.m. to 6:30 p.m. today only, and so we took more time yesterday, stayed up late, and recording recorded her session earlier so that our audience doesn't have to be discomforted due to this problem. we took care of the audio and video and considered some of the q and a questions earlier so you will you will not have to wait for the answers and wait till the end for your queries to be answered by anushka thank you for your understanding now we'll continue with the second session once the second session happens we'll be having a final q and a and a thank you note so please wait for that so uh, hello everyone i am arvin amrita i am currently the team lead in uh, sar for the structures and materials part so today i'll be explaining about the thermal aspects of the structures which are essential so that the structures integrity is maintained so i hope my screen is visible yeah so is it visible now yes yes it's visible okay so i'll be starting
the presentation now. So yeah, we'll begin with the presentation. In this presentation, I'll be teaching all of you like why we need structures uh, uh, to be in a thermal aspect. How can we prevent the thermal aspects of these structures? And why and how are the structural uh, components are maintained under the design and requirements? So first we'll be starting about myself. So what I do, so this is my profile. You can see that I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's from SRM Institute of Science and Technology in Mechanical Engineering Department. And in SRAR, I am the team lead for materials and structures as well as the lead in talent head and acquisition. My domain interests are thermal energy storage systems as well as thermal protection system, which is also known as TPS, which I'll be explaining in this presentation. If for further information, you can contact me through ResearchGate. Here I've linked my ResearchGate profile. So yes, in this, in this presentation, we'll be covering the basic terms and definitions, which will be useful for understanding the other subsystems and the thermal protection system, why we need them, and then impact of thermal environment on vehicle system, design requirements and constraints which we should be considering before uh, pro designing the thermal protection system and finally we'll be coming to the thermal environment there are the three aspects pre-launch after launch and during the ascent so initially we'll be starting with the basic terms and definitions so what is heat heat is a form of energy that is transferred between one system to another system. Heat always is transferred from a lower temperature system to a higher temperature system. Heat can also be referred as heat energy or thermal energy. So how is heat transferred? So there are three methods through which heat is transferred. One is convection, conduction, and radiation. So what are these three methods? How can we identify them? And how are they related to space science and engineering? So we'll be looking at all of this in this slide. So first, what is conduction? It is a transfer of heat energy through direct contact. For example, when you're cooking, like you put a spatula in, for example, a metal spatula in a metal pan. So when the pan is heated, the heat is also transferred to the spatula. And sometimes when you leave the spatula for a long, long time, you find that the spatula becomes hot. And you all would have experimented this in your uh, undergraduates or also in your schoolings, like the basic schoolings, that you'll be having an experiment in physics where you'll be heating a metal rod and you can slowly feel the transfer of heat. The more longer you keep, the more hotter the metal rod becomes. So that is what is conduction. Next is convection. In conduction, you would have noticed that the method is direct. That is when you keep, you are directly touching the spatula and the spatula is directly touching the pan. In convection, that is not necessary. It can be, but it is not necessary. So convection is a transfer of heat energy through the movement of liquid or gas. For example, we can see fans and natural, the convection can also be defined into natural and artificial. Finally, we'll be coming to radiations. So what is radiation? Radiation is also a form of heat transfer, but it usually takes place at high temperature. It takes place in temperatures above zero degree Kelvin. So radiation is the transfer of heat through electromagnetic waves. Comparing these three transfers, the fastest heat transfer would be radiation. And next we'll have convection and finally conduction because conduction is a slow process. So what is heating rate? Heating rate is the rate at which the temperature is increased. It can also be the efficiency of an electrical generator or a power plant in which it can convert a fuel into useful heat heat and finally convert into electricity. Here you can see two pictures which uh, like depict the 
parameters of heating rate. Some of them are related to space. The others are related to atmospheric conditions in Earth. So you can see air temperature, which is simple, which is the temperature of the atmosphere. Humidity, what is humidity? Humidity is the amount of water vapor available in the atmosphere. Metabolic heat, what is metabolic heat? Metabolic heat is the heat emitted by a living being. For example, when we are calculating for HVAC in electric vehicles, we'll take into a metabolic heat of the number of people sitting in the electric vehicle or in, in any other vehicle. Clothing insulation. It is insulation provided by the clothing in order to reduce the metabolic heat. Finally, radiant temperature. What is radiant temperature? It is the average temperature of a structure or a subsystem. It is usually done at a particular temperature below which the system is exceeding the thermal radiation. So I hope I've covered everything except for air velocity. Air velocity can be present only inside the atmosphere because when you go to space, there is no air velocity because there is no air. So heat flux. What is heat flux? We would have studied about magnetic flux, electric flux, and heat flux. Any flux is the density per flow rate intensity per area per unit of time. So for heat flux, we will be defining it as heat flux density or the heat flow density of the intensity is a flow of energy per unit of area per unit of time. Here, I've illustrated the picture of the heat flux formula, which is minus K into delta T. Delta T is the temperature gradient, which is the difference in the temperature. So we'll be, I'll be explaining the picture which I've depicted on the left, that is how the thermal heat loss and gain happens to a material. So the yellow rectangular block is a material. And you can see, that you can also call that an insulator material. You can see that on the left hand side and the right hand side are two temperatures T1 and T2 and the gray body which is attached to the material is a heat flux sensor which will calculate the amount of heat gained or heat lost when a temperature or air from one side travels through an insulation material having a conductivity of K. We have generalized it. We have not given any value and the material thickness is X. So when Heat travels from one part to another part through a material of a particular thickness. There will be definitely a loss or a gain in the heat. What is heat load? Heat load is the amount of heat energy that we would need to be added to maintain the temperature in acceptable range. For example, in certain conditions, we would require a lower temperature. So we would be adding heat energy or cooling energy. It depends upon application to application. The cooling load is the amount of heat energy that would be needed to remove the existing heat in order to cool the particular place. You can see on the right hand side, I've depicted two images. One is of the Atlantis thermal analysis. And on the top, you can see the heat emitted from various different things and people inside our home. So, for example, when we take a home, we have equipments like lights, uh, computers, uh, and other gadgets. So, in this picture, we can depict, like it is depicting the heat emitted by various objects and people inside the house. Finally, we are coming to thermal load. What is thermal load? Thermal load is the amount of heat, which is sensible or latent heat energy, which is to be removed from an inner environment by refrigerating equipment. What are refrigerating equipment like pumps to maintain the environment at design temperature when worst case external temperature is being experienced. That is when we have unexpected uh, environments to which we need to be, um, which we need to face. So what is sensible and what is latent heat? It is not the same. Sensible heat is the change in temperature of an object without a change in its phase. What are phases? Solid, liquid, and gases. So what is latent heat? Latent heat is the heat required to change in phase between solids, liquids, and gases. So in sensible heat, there will not be any phase change, but whereas in latent heat, there will be phase change. On the right-hand side, you can see the uh, thermal distributions of in the rocket nozzle. 
So why do we need these thermal systems? What is the use of having them? What is the importance of having them? So we need thermal systems in order to ensure the integrity of the vehicle and subsystems and the structural elements available in the vehicle. Also the electronics, which are like, which fall under the avionics bay. And we need to ensure that these parts are under normal functions. That is some parts are sensitive to heat temperature, whereas some are temp uh, sensitive to pressure. We need thermal system in order to protect all this environment and maintain the temperature in allowable levels in order to protect them from harsh environments. So how do we select the thermal protection system? On what basis? So we'll be having three factors for selection of the material, which will be thermal environment. At what temperature are these structures going to function, whether it is cold or whether it is hot? It varies also from planet to planet. It depends upon the astronomical units that is how far that planet is from the sun or from any star. Then we'll come to the material selection. There will be a deviation in the behavior of the material along with respect to the temperature as well as pressure. So material selection should be handled depending on the temperature in which we are going to operate. And finally, the temperature constraints. The melting point and the boiling point of any gas or any metal depends upon the temperature. So all those fall under the temperature constraints. Usually, the structure of the rocket face a lot of heating problem. Majorly, there are three heating problems which we'll be discussing uh, like in the next slide. So why do these heating problems occur? These heating problems occur due to the solar radiation earth reflected radiation which is also known as albedo earth emitted radiation and internal power dissipation that is these are the factors which are affecting the rocket in terms of heating problem and finally we'll be discussing about the aerodynamic heating and the jet plume effects which will which are the major sources for thermal environment so these are the three heating causes first is the aerodynamic heating over a flat surface next is the aerodynamic heating over a launch vehicle when it is being launched and finally the heating due to the jet exhaust at the nozzle so what happens when there is a flow of air over a body the air particles in contact with the surface of the body are brought to rest why because of the viscosity of the air and the surface roughness in this process of slowing down the kinetic energy of the air particle is converted into thermal energy, which raises the temperature of the air at a certain level. So at the high temperature air that surrounds the vehicle structures induces a heat transfer to the surface with which it is in contact. And this process is termed as aerodynamic heating. So this is how aerodynamic heating takes place. The total temperature rise, which occurs uh, under certain conditions, which we also known as boundary conditions, and the temperature increase also depends upon the type of the constraints. Like what are the constraints? What are the boundary layers? If the flow is more, the temperature rise is also more. Here in the picture, we can see the causes, like which, are, which causes on the effects of these three major heating, which is the cavitation performance, the rotor vibrations, sometimes due to instability and wobbling, there can be a damage in the rotor vibration, blade optimization, chamber lifetime. So chamber lifetime is totally dependent upon the heating due to jet exhaust. Prediction of failure mode and mechanism is required and prediction of the uh, lifetime of the chamber should also be calculated. Finally, we'll come to regenerative cooling and combustion instability. Combustion instability can be resolved by performing such uh, analysis before the launch and we can resolve this problem. And then the engine system. Engine system, how do we do it? We predict the engine system performance, the engine hazards and the state for risk mitigations. So we're coming to the second topic of our webinar. I'll be speaking about thermal protection system, which is also known as TPS. And what are the types of TPS used? So what is thermal protection system? Thermal protection system is a system which protects the uh, structure of the rocket from harsh environment. And how are they classified? They're classified into three types. One is passive, one is semi-passive, and active. The, these applications totally depend upon the scenarios. The TPS scheme selected has to be simple, less in mass, cost-effective, as well as reliable. 
so types of tps so passive tps when do we use it these are used for structures in heat sinks and hot structures which is achieved by increasing the mass of the thermal protection system or tps and the surface radiation semi passive tps heat is removed by working fluid and surface radiation like we can use systems like heat pump finally active tps include transpiration cooling film cooling and coolant flow which channels to restrict temperature within the limits like heat exchangers on the right hand side you can see the flight atlantis and the high temperature reusable surface insulation tiles on it so tps for cryogenic stage why do we need it for cryogenic stage during the pre launch phase there are three important thermal loads which are direct solar radiation earth reflected radiation which are albedo earth emitted radiation so what are the terms which we need to be considered before designing it so we have to take in uh, in account of the boil off losses during the heat and leak and the minimum weight due to insulation on the right hand side you can see the image of the cryogenic stage in which the propellant liner insulation and casing is depicted you can see there is a small thin layer which is known as a liner which is protecting the propellant from the insulation and the casing the insulation is prevented i mean it is uh, emit i mean it is depicted so that the heat generated from the casing due to harsh environments do not affect the properties of the propellant which is inside the liner continuation of that i'll be explaining how why what are the conditions which we need to consider so we must consider the, uh, to ensure the surface adherence to the base material which we'll be using it should be acting as a thermal barrier to maintain the temperature within allowable limits should possess sufficient mechanical stiffness to withstand flight loads thermally it should be protecting the aero thermodynamic loads which we discussed before and finally it should be protecting the static electricity build up what is the impact on vehicle system due to the tps so heating due to jet exhaust thrust chambers of the rocket engines are subjected to severe thermal environments which demand efficient cooling systems for safe and normal functioning of engines for example when we take our vehicles in earth there are like three kind of cooling system which is air liquid the liquid can be either water or oil and when we come to some other parts like phase changing materials are also used the radiatively cooled thrust chambers and the hot jet exhaust of the rocket engines are the source causing thermal environment to vehicle subsystems so on the right hand side you can see the cfd simulations on the jet exhaust which shows the internal shock and the normal shocks apart from the separation point the convecting heating due to jet impingement that is the affected on affecting on the vehicle so jet impingement of the vehicle convection heating resulting from the jet interactions where multiple rocket engines are used so when multiple rocket engines are used the tps system should be evaluated very carefully and finally the radiative heating from jet exhaust so these are the parameters which cause the jet exhaust uh, heating so fourthly we'll be coming to the thermal design requirements and constraints what are the constraints what are the requirements which uh, material should be uh, uh, satisfying there are six requirements which i have listed here which are the major requirements one is the stagnation point heating what is stagnation point heating why do we need stagnation point heating next is the aerodynamic heating how does the aerodynamic heating affect the structures then is the thermal aspect of the interstage flow interaction between core and strap on motors insulation requirements and finally the avionics bay cooling so coming to the stagnation point heat what is stagnation point heat heating takes place at the nose cone due to air stagnation that is due to air resistance proper heat flux estimation estimation that is we discussed what a heat flux is so proper heat flux estimation of this zone in the payload is very essential for example if the nose cone is very blunt it decides that there is more stagnation point more bluntness there will be lesser heating but leads to increased drag which is not required and flow instabilities therefore the limit of uh, for stagnation heat flux has to be carefully decided in order to meet the overall requirements next is the aerodynamic heating 
So the estimation of aerodynamics heating on the various components of the vehicle, such as payload fairing, interstate structures, nose cone, and many others, require the careful design and analysis. Maximum thermal load locations, such as flow reattachment point, etc., have to be identified correctly. So how do how can these be identified? For example, we can use a wind tunnel in any of the computational flow dynamics software and analyze the air, air flow, that is, analyze the aerodynamic heating. And suitable protective measures should be implemented. Thirdly, we'll be coming to thermal aspects of interstate structures. This structure is mainly built from aluminum alloy or CFRP. What is CFRP? carbon fiber reinforced polymer material which has a very very high strength that is even one mm of this material can provide a strength of 3000 megapascals which is sufficient for rocket materials so these materials are subjected to aerodynamic heating due to the uh, ascent phase and also to exhaust plume heating or uh, depending upon where these vehicles are assembled and used Exhaust plume heating is due to the main engine of the stages, control, retro, and ullage motors. What are ullage motors? These are small motors which are independently fluid for rocket engines. The heating is transmitted to the structure depending on the type of usage due to radiation and particle impingement. That is the affected affection on the particle, like how much it is affected. Flow interaction between core and strap-ons. So the vehicle with strap-on motors always have interaction of core airflow along with the strap-on motors. The interference flow between them depends upon the nose cone. The slanted nose cone generally reduces the movements and local loads due to jet impingement. The gap flow between the strap-on and core stages induce flow interaction, causing local heating towards the forward end of the strap-ons insulation requirements so what kind of materials uh, we have to uh, like carefully evaluate in order to provide it as an insulation materials to maintain the temperature within allowable limits different heat sources are to be accounted and thermal analysis has to be carried out taking into account the maximum duration of exposure for tanks to heat source so for example the journey of a rocket is from this point to this point and it takes this much amount of time so the insulation material varies for example if it's a longer amount of time we need like stronger insulation for example it is a shorter period of time and whether it is an interplanetary machine or just a launch it depends by providing foam pads around the tanks during vehicle liftoff using suitable wrap release mechanism is also one point on how we can improve the insulation requirements in some cases we use chilled air circulation in order to provide the insulation pads and the liquid tank avionics bake cooling so what are avionics avionics are generally the electronic uh, components present in the system so these packages are very sensible and they can only work under certain temperature and certain pressure if the temperature and the pressure are too low or too high they would definitely be damaged so avionic packages are used for vehicle navigation and control telemetry and tracking these are generally mounted on a separate uh, bay termed as avionics bay it is essential to ensure that temperatures of all avionics uh, packages are within the prescribed limits during the operation. As I told you, if the temperature limits are either above or too low, then it would affect the avionics bay cooling. The temperature of the avionic packages at liftoff is desired such that the increase in their temperature during the flight operations is maintained within the allowable limit. That is, when a launch vehicle moves from uh, lift off that is pre lift off and to lift off there will be temperature and pressure variations so also that should be considered while designing the avionics bay cooling the specified temperature in this bay is achieved during the pre launch phase by introducing suitable cooling systems at launch pad at the last topic is a thermal environment what is a thermal environment how the thermal environment varies so there are three modes We'll be talking about thermal environment before launch, that is pre-launch. The main thermal design requirement for a spacecraft or any launch vehicles along with various electronics packages, it is required that the thermal temperature, I mean thermal material temperature of storable liquid propellant as well as the 
uh, electronics should be explained well. That is, it should be maintained. Here you can see an image of a rocket, which is before its launch, that is pre-launch. Thermal environment during liftoff. So what are the constraints and what are the problems during liftoff? There should be adequacy or flame deflector and the launch pad thermal protection system on different systems due to the jet affecting the loads should be con uh, constraints. That is, we should take those constraints, like how the flame deflector work and what will be the temperature of the launch pad all, and what will be the exhaust uh, temperature and the flumes coming from the jet exhaust, all these should be considered. Thermal environment for umbilical towers during vehicle vertical rise, that is during the liftoff and vehicle pitching and suitable thermal protection should be estimated effectively. Effect of convective and reflective radiations from hot gases and jets on the base thermal environments and adequacy of the TPA should be explained. That is, what is the convection? I told you that convection is an indirect method wherein heat is transferred in, uh, in the form of, in the, due to the movement of the liquid or gases. So convection is also there and the radiation, the reflected radiations that are the earth reflected radiations and the albedos is what we are talking about in this uh, topic. The last phase will be the ascent flight phase. During the vehicle ascent phase, the thermal loads on the vehicle are generally due to the aerodynamic heating which takes place during the vehicle ascending through the denser atmosphere and heating to exhaust uh, uh, jet exhaust. We need suitable thermal protection systems which can be uh, essential and to restrict okay, the so temperature of the components, like various components the under the under and above the thermal environment. So yeah, we have come to the end of the presentation. I hope you are clear about the TPA system, the design requirements, the constraints, the environments under which it will be uh, functioning, as well as the material selection. So, I would be like to I would be liking to thank Nandita for the whole presentation that she has made out uh, via her exams are also going on. So I would like to thank her really. So now I would like to take on the Q and A session. Our audience might be having questions, right? So we will go on to the Q and A session, and I would like to add Anushka in the stream here. So uh, audience, if you have any kind of questions, please drop down in the comment box so that we can pick it up and we can solve that questions right now here. So I'll request our audience to uh, go th put up some questions in the comment section. We will like wait for a minute or a two, then we will go on with the session forward. Till then, also, uh, we will have a certificate of participation. Those who are not able to join the groups, we will be sending that participation link in the uh, WhatsApp group itself, uh, that the main group we have for the registration and the participants, we will be sharing the certificate of participation form link there also. And currently, also, we will share them here at this point. So OK, thank you. And uh, if you have questions, we will take that now. OK, so Dr. Rudy have something. Would you like to speak a moment about regenerative cooling of a nozzle? Yes, so um, what I know about regenerative cooling is that uh, basically the nozzle, around the nozzle, there are tubes through which the fuel passes so that the fuel uh, cools down the high temperature nozzle. So uh, the fuel is like used in two ways for cooling as well as it can be used again so that is regenerative cooling thank you anushka we have other questions also so gaurav have a question i find that interesting what kind of composite materials we use in rockets so uh composite materials as in um there are various like there are uh, alum, aluminum lithium alloys then there are uh, like uh, titanium alloys then uh, there is like various research still going on in composite materials so yeah that is that's it. 
Okay. So I cannot find more questions here. Thank you for that one. I hope your doubt is solved, Gaurav. If uh, other questions are there, there, please drop down in the comment section. We will pick them up. Okay. So, Gaurav, I have another question for you. Which composite material do we use for random uh, uh, use for randoms of aircraft? Red um, of aircraft. Sorry. Actually, yeah, I I don't have like idea of what particular metal we use for compose what particular composite material we used for that. So I'll like study about it and I'll let you know in the WhatsApp group which we have. Thank you so much. Okay, so Harshil have another question for you. Uh, how reusable no uh, uh, reusable nozzles are made differently? I guess he's talking about reusable rocket nozzles. Yes, so uh, reusable no rocket nozzles, like currently, as I as I said, uh, like space uh, SpaceX has been has used uh, this uh, cold form stainless steel as material, uh, which is considered reusable. So uh, they like it is not yet may very mainstream the work is still being done on it so yeah so the cold forming process is done so you can look up videos youtube videos on that process okay thank you uh, so i hope uh, doubts are cleared in the comment section okay okay another question another question we have so we'll take that also um can we use rocket engines underwater? <laughs> That's one crazy. Uh, actually, uh, we we have to like do research on that part yet. I think. <laughs> okay, so Shushant have a big question. So, uh, when we move from Earth atmosphere to outside the outside, the pressure changes. So, uh, as temperature, how do uh, we preserve rocket structure and are we experimenting that in earth atmosphere so uh, so yes so that is the reason why we select materials in such a way that our structure is preserved so the materials are first tested so like uh, the like for example there is aluminium lithium alloy where there is 90% aluminium 35% of lithium so this alloy will be first uh, tested at high, like if it survives at high temperatures as, as well as low temperatures, and if it is successful, like then uh, the rocket structure will preserve. And so this is the like this is the main reason why we study about materials, so so that they are uh, like they uh, they do not fail at high temperatures. Okay, thank you, and. Okay, Tanmay also have a question, but that question is answered by Dr. Rudy. Thank you so much for that. Tanmay, you can refer to this one. Okay, so Shushant is saying okay. Kaurav is saying thank you to Anushka. So we will continue forward with the session. And uh, the presence of the audience at this event was a gift, and the constant support made it truly a special day. Dream Sark would like to thank all the participants who are attending the Rocketry Fundamentals. And we would also like to thank all our presenters that have currently and uh, put up their hard work from last two to three weeks and they have prepared all the presentations and they are showing it in the live stream here. Now I'd like to add all my teammates as many as I can. And I'd like it if you guys can on your cameras that would be helpful so that everyone knows in the audience who we are talking to fellow teammates thank you for assisting with the rocketry fundamentals thank you for interestingly teaching our viewers and sharing your knowledge in various subjects uh, teammates like you are truly valuable to our sark society we happy we hope you had fun and we hope you had you gained experience about public speaking about other stuff about rocketry i hope you guys had a good session Thank you.
okay so uh, we will go forward with the session and uh, i hope most of the people have joined the whatsapp link groups that we have uh, sent it in the chat and also if you have not then also we have provided the uh, certificate of participation link that is i am uh, pinning now so you can go to this and you can get your certificate of participation we will also share this link in the whatsapp group so yeah we will move on now so it's all over to you Okay, so sorry for there are some technical issues. Actually, uh, I got cut down. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for the beautiful support. We all enjoyed the training and enthusiastic learners all over here from India as well as from outside. We hope you had fun. We look forward to serve the next event, and I hope also you will join that too. So, thank you, uh, thank you, everyone. We will continue. Uh, I hope everyone who was here from the yeah. day one, you guys have joined the day, uh, WhatsApp group. That will be important because you guys will be getting a certified. Thank you, Tanmay. Tanmay, Vinay, Sushanbia, everyone who was there from the beginning. Anshuman. Rudy sir is also there. He is commenting. Thank you for your commitment. And we love all this thing. Uh, after seeing all those comments and all. We also get too much motivated from you people. So we'll next time we will surely another event on astronomy in a few weeks. Yeah, Harshil also yeah. was asking about the astrometrica software. So we will surely Shall plan about that, Harshil. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will wait for a minute. For all the audience still stick sticking with us, I'll introduce you to my teammates, the people who have joined us from now. Uh, one of them is Anushka Moharir. He, she has been with us for about two weeks, two to three weeks. And she was in the materials structure, materials and structure team. They, they and Nandita have worked on the presentation together and have learned the various concepts related to it so that we could be able to uh, share the knowledge with you all. Um, other team members are Varna. Varna was also, Varna was also our uh, presenter and also a speaker. She also wrote a lot of stuff for us and presented two days in a row, which was a good thing. She has also been us with us for 15 days. I thank you, Varna. Uh, I thank you, Anshuka. <laughs> I thank you, Anushka. It's a tongue turner. I'm sorry. Thank you, Manjunath. Manjunath is uh, in 12th standard. He's one of the youngest members of our team. Thank you, Manjunath. You have been uh, very thank good. You, thank you growth in this field. We have seen you grow in only 20 days. That was a great thing to see. You have a great future ahead and I thank you for that. I thank you for he your commitment. He is actually commitment. the inspiration. He is actually the inspiration uh, of many people. He has become actually. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have also with us Shuvankar. Shuvankar is right now doing his engineering and he also even though there were some technical difficulties, he uh, went through it all and decided to present it right then and there. Thank you, Shivankar. Your presentation was very good. And uh, we could see the improvement in the next two to three days that you uh, did the presentation regularly. Thank you all. 
Okay, uh, Harshil wanted to say something. That's good, Harshil. You can join IASC once you have the qualifications. Thank you, Anshuman. Sir, how to become a core member of Team Sir? Well, uh, there is no difference about core member or a member. You just need to be a member. And if you work hard, you are a member. Yeah, you also we will uh, yeah, also to join Team Sark, uh, we will also provide the uh, Global Space uh, Society link and we will be sharing that in the WhatsApp group. Also. So if you want to join Team Sark, then you can fill up the form. And also we talked about in the first session, so you can do so. So, OK, we will end up the meet now. Thank you, everyone, to join the session. And wholeheartedly, I, from the whole team, Sark, I just wanted to thank you, each and everyone who have joined, who have participated, who have worked really, really hard to make this session really, really interesting. And also, the next time we do, I hope everyone will participate. So we will end up now. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you.